distinguished audience, glory to Christ. Your Excellency, you have to be very careful. At le in the, you are present in a room where at least two speakers are calling for demons, including me. <laughs> <laughs> I will speak about the demon of lie, uh, so the question of truth and distortion of truth. We live in uh, quasi-biblical times. We all know the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now a bit different tree is in, f is in front of us, uh, that is the tree of knowledge of truth and lie. Everyone who eats the truth of these three is becoming unable to distinguish between truth and lie. Of course, we live in a, uh, the part, special part of the world where Russia is the main threat in this sense. Uh, at the time of my dissident youth, the Soviet regime had to jam radio broadcasts to prevent the truth from entering human minds. As soon as people heard the truth, they immediately recognized or distinguished or recognized the truth as such. Uh, today, Putin's regime doesn't need to do that to jam the information. Instead, it undermines the very ability of people to distinguish between the truth and lies. Another point. At the medieval times, it was a matter of honor for, for a knight to inform his rival of his approach. The Kremlin is enjoying quite the opposite manner. At first, Putin publicly denied the presence of Russian soldiers in the Crimea, and the phrase, nas tam niet, we are not present there, became the ironic motto of that victorious Russian aggression, along with the green little man expression. A few months later, when the victory was ensured, Putin confirmed that the Occupation of the Crimea was done by the Russian reg regular troops according to his order. Open dishonesty in the case of such a high-ranking world leader is unbelievable. It seems like the initiative of Putin will be blamed unanimously everywhere. It never happened. Vice versa, the lie technique became attractive. And here we have the consequence of the postmodern nature of our democratic societies. Postmodernism has developed the classical med method of granting of the reliable <coughs> information. Basic principles here are objectivity and impartiality. No one in this world carries the absolute truth. The truth we have is only relative. Therefore, there is no truth or lie. There are simply different opinions. To label something as a lie means to give it a moral judgment. Postmodernism is afraid of that. And this is exactly what the postmodernism bans because it is impartiality according to its understanding. Therefore, the truth in this case is a golden mean between different opinions. This system functions rather well as long as it involves only people with certain moral standards who are able to play the game with the same rules. However, this system is ruined by deliberate liars. 
This was the invention of Putin and Surkov, who created the whole industry of propagandistic fakes on the state level and spread them throughout the whole world. How does the postmodern world react on that? It rejects the fake information as a lie very rarely. At least it was the case a few years ago. Maybe now the situation is changing a little bit. Much often, such a fake information is treated as a Russian point of view and included into the system of de defining of the golden mean of the truth. As the result, the truth uh, obtained in this way is absolutely unreliable. Recently, Edward Lucas described that in an excellent way. I quote, Our media uh, prize fairness over truth. If Western sources say that a Russian missile shot down an airliner over Ukraine and the pro-Kremlin voices dispute this, it is easier to give both sides of the story rather than rule out one side as too tend tendentious. This addiction to balance is selective. Our editorial decision makers do not generally balance round ethers with flat others, or astronomers with astrologers. But they are quite happy to host Kremlin viewpoints as though these were extremely legitimate and reasonable. Unfortunately, dishonesty is spreading in the world as a fire in a dry forest. And uh, here, let's move to another part of the world, to the Western countries, uh, in particular to the United States. Of course, I cannot say by my own about the situation in the United States, but let me quote an excellent Rice University commencement address by Michael Bloomberg. It was just recently. I, I read that this <laughs> yesterday evening. Uh, he made that speech on May 12, the year 2018, yes. Uh, so I quote, my old friend Pat Monaghan once said, people are entitled to their own opinions, but not their own facts. That didn't used to be a controversial statement before. Today, those in politics routinely dismiss any inconvenient information, no matter how factual, as fake, and they routinely say things that are demonstrably false. Today, though, many of those at the highest levels of power see the plain truth as a threat they fear it, they deny it, and they attack it, just as the communists once did. And so here we are, in the midst of an epidemic of dishonesty and an endless barrage of lies. The trend toward elected officials propagating alternate, alternate realities, or winkling at those who do, is one of the most serious dangers facing democracies. Free societies depend on citizens who recognize that deceit in government isn't th that deceit in government. When elected officials speak as though they are above the truth, they will act as though they are above the law. And when we tolerate dishonesty, we get criminality. Sometimes it's 
the, in the norm of corruption, in the form of corruption. Sometimes it's abuse of power, and sometimes it's both. If left unchecked, these abuses can erode the institutions that preserve and protect our rights and freedoms and open the door to tyranny and fascism." Unquote. So what is the role of Catholic universities in this field? Let me quote um, Michael Bloomberg ag again, and for the last time. Uh, this is the, the appeal to students. Recognize that no one, no either party, has a monopoly on good ideas. Judge events based on what happened, not who did it. Hold yourself and our leaders to the highest standards of ethics and morality. Respect the knowledge of scientists. Follow the data whenever, wherever it leads. Listen to people you disagree with, without trying to censor them or sh uh, sh shout over them. S h o u t, and have the cor courage to say things that your own side doesn't want to hear. Can we make this quote a bit shorter? Yes, we can. Just remind people that they shall not eat the fruits of the tree of truth and lie. Thank you very much.